All sites affected by SCP-970 are to be acquired by the Foundation with a suitable cover established. Civilians attempting to enter the site are to be discouraged, preferably within the boundaries of local law. Trespassers are to be administered a Class A amnestic. In light of Experiment 4 and Addendum 972, armed personnel are to be stationed by entries into affected sites. SCP-970 is a spatial phenomenon wherein a collection of rooms are looped on themselves. In all cases found, this is by means of a series of doors appearing in the walls, all in a straight line, such that it is possible to walk forwards and end up at the starting position. The alteration to the rooms does not affect neighboring rooms and floors. There is, as of yet, no known explanation for the appearance of this phenomenon. SCP-971 is a cell block within Sector 19, and the first example of the SCP-970 phenomenon encountered by the Foundation. It was constructed with the intent of housing Class D personnel, and fulfilled that purpose until when several D-classes breached containment in an escape attempt. The investigation into the incident led to the discovery that a series of doors had appeared in the cell block, leading into rooms on the opposite side of the corridor. It was quickly established that the layout of the building did not support this addition, and that the rooms were following a non-standard geometry. Since the incident, further such examples of the phenomenon have been discovered, with percent of these in an 800 kilometer radius of Sector 19. One notable example was found within the western wing of the Legislative Palace. In this instance, the Foundation was unable to acquire the affected site, and local authorities proved intractable and hostile when recommendations on security were made. The matter was resolved six months later in a violent coup which saw the destruction of the building, resulting in was eventually contained by mobile task forces Ro8 and Pi-1, supported by the rebel forces. Addendum 971 contains all experimentation logs on SCP-970 to date. D-970-294 was given a head-mounted camera and instructed to walk through the doors of SCP-970-1. Subject expressed doubts as to the possibility of the phenomenon, but followed orders. Subject successfully navigated the rooms, expressing alarm and surprise to discover himself at his starting point. Video footage and internal measuring devices show that the subject did not deviate noticeably from a straight line, but nevertheless emerged on the other side of the corridor. The anomaly is confirmed. A note from Dr. Yu. This experiment was intended to provide a baseline for comparison with other experiments, though given the single property of the phenomenon, I'm unsure as to how we will be able to test it. D-970-295 was instructed to repeat the above instructions for as long as he felt able. Water and food were made available, and the subject was told that he was to stop only when either instructed to or upon reaching exhaustion. Subject showed a normal appetite for the exertion and continued for 205 iterations, whereupon the subject reacted with confusion on fetching his water. He claimed that researcher Taylor had previously had black hair, whereas she now had blonde hair. At no point during the experiment had Taylor dyed her hair, and colleagues claimed that she has had the same hair color for nine months. Taylor admitted that she had considered coloring her hair black the previous night, but chose not to. Examination of the subject's recording indeed showed Taylor with black hair until the 205th iteration. On further examination, other small differences between iterations were noted. The experiment was called to an immediate end. A note from Dr. Yoom. I take it back. Further testing is necessary.
D970-296 was given a chipped card containing the following items of data. A 16-bit pseudo-random number called datum A, the final score of a football match that finished 20 minutes before the experiment began called datum B, the morning's Dow Jones Index called datum C, and a 5-day weather forecast for the continental United States from two days before called datum D. A scanner was erected by the west door to record the data as the subject walked through. D970-296 was once again instructed to repeat the instructions of Experiment 1 for as long as he felt able. Datum A diverged from its original value after the first iteration, as expected. Datum B first diverged from its original value after 24 iterations, with the range of deviation extending with successive iterations. Here the experiment was paused briefly. It is recommended for future researchers that they ensure none of their colleagues have an emotional investment in the match. At 76 iterations, the first unpredicted event occurred. This iteration of the card featured a lengthy note in addition to the data presented, and an alternative definition of datum B, the score of a women's basketball game. Researcher Taylor had previously suggested this for datum B, but had been overruled by Dr. Jung. See above note on emotional investment. The iteration of D970-296 present at the time did not wish to comment further on the incident, as he had been similarly interrogated for 10 successive iterations until a previous Dr. Jung put the note on the card. The scanner was reprogrammed to add notes to the end of each card. Note from Research Assistant Boston. Dr. Jung initially encountered technical problems with the scanner, prompting researcher Taylor to, quote, go and fetch someone who knows what he's doing, at which point she walked through the doors to the previous iteration, returning with a second Dr. Jung. The original Dr. Jung proved unwilling to be assisted, leading to a row between the two doctors, which was only exacerbated when a third Dr. Jung emerged from the next iteration, complaining about the slow pace of the experiment. The disagreement was eventually broken up by security, who mandated A, the reprogramming of the scanner by the second Dr. Jung, and B, that all staff remain in their particular iteration to avoid confusion. At 157 iterations, an unidentified man appeared in the place of D970-296. The man was immediately restrained according to security procedures. Analysis of the notes on his card indicated that he was, in fact, D970-296, and that in his original iteration, a different D-class had been allocated to the experiment. D970-296-1, as he will now be known, showed signs of bruising, allegedly from multiple enthusiastic restraints during this experiment. Dr. Jung provided a cardboard sign to hang around his neck, reading, I am authorized to be here, please read the notes. D970-2961 showed gratitude. Datum C first diverged from its original value after 234 iterations. Datum D did not diverge within the span of the experiment, 371 iterations. A note from Dr. Jung. This experiment establishes that, as the number of iterations increases, the point of divergence from our own iteration lies further in the past. It also shows the wisdom in planning any experiment involving SCP-971 sometime in advance to ensure that all nearby iterations are working from the same basis. In addition to this, the incident noted by research assistant Boston shows that neighboring iterations remain consistent throughout the period of interaction. A robotic probe was programmed to recognize and open the doors of SCP-971 and fitted with a camera. Recharging facilities were made available in the corridor to be automatically accessed when the probe was under 5% charge. The camera was fitted with a blocking chip resonating with a computer within the corridor in the first iteration. This experiment differs from Experiment 3 as it intends to relay information to the first iteration whereas Experiment 3 passed information down to further iterations. The film displayed approximately 600 hours worth of footage approximating to iterations. Analysis of the recording has shown the following iterations to be of note. 
on iteration 213, the first immediately noticeable difference is seen. Dr. Jung is wearing a red tie. Starting on iteration 704, researcher Taylor is absent and does not appear again until iteration 1061. However, in iteration 1061, researcher Taylor's identity pass declares her a doctor. On iteration the research team appear to be under attack. Dr. Jung has been shot in the chest. On iteration the research team have disappeared. The wall is covered in blood. The following symbols can be seen in the blood. Finally, on iteration, the research team facial features. A note from Dr. Jung. I do not believe that anything can be established by further experimentation. Following a nervous breakdown, researcher Taylor has been admitted to the psychiatric ward. Other members of the research team have undergone similar, though less severe, reactions. The footage from Experiment 4 is believed to be the cause of the problems, and all affected personnel have been administered Class B amnestics as part of their treatment. Experimentation on SCP-970 has been ceased for the immediate future, and the security on affected sites has been upgraded.